Hello all, I'm Gunnar Madhivanan, Current Affairs Faculty from Offices IIS Academy. In this video, I will be discussing the 10th Current Affairs hit list topic that is regarding biofuel. Friends, what is a fuel? It is a substance on combustion will be releasing heat or energy. Now, what is fossil fuel? These are fuel derived from fossils. Fossils are those plants and animals which lived thousands of years ago. Today, we refer it as fossils. When we derive fuel from this, that fossil, we refer it as fossil fuel. Now, what is biofuel? Biofuel is derived from biomass. It's derived from biomass like plants, animal, plant waste, animal waste, right? Microorganisms from which when we derive, that is called as biofuel. These biomasses like plants, animal waste, right? Uh, microorganisms all these can be readily replenished it can be readily replenished since it can be readily replenished biofuel is coming under renewable source of energy but fossil fuels are non renewable source of energy because fossils are not readily replenished but these biomasses can be readily replenished so we are bringing biofuel under renewable energy category this biofuel is divided into four categories. First, first generation biofuel, second generation biofuel, third generation biofuel and fourth generation biofuel. So first generation biofuel, these are biofuels derived from food items. These are derived from food items. Now second generation, these are derived from non-food items or these are derived from the non-edible part of the plant. Now, third generation biofuel, these are derived from microorganisms like algae, microorganisms. Now, 4G, that is derived from genetically modified crops. In some other video, I will be discussing about genetically modified crops in detail. Okay, so these are the four categories of biofuel. In 2018, in 2018, government came with national biofuel policy. The main objective of this policy is to blend 20% of ethanol with petrol and to blend 5% of biodiesel bio diesel with diesel. So blend 20% of ethanol with petrol and blend 5% of biodiesel with diesel. Friends, ethanol and biodiesel, these are biofuels. These are examples of biofuel. Ethanol is derived from sugar containing substances. Biodiesel is derived from the <coughs> used cooking oil, non-edible vegetable oil, municipal solid waste from which we will be deriving this biodiesel. The main aim is to achieve this blending target by 2030. This national biofuel policy is also increasing the scope of raw materials available for producing this biofuel. See, these biofuels are largely derived from sugar containing substances and this ethanol is largely derived from molasses that is from sugar cane. There was restrictions in the raw materials which can be used for producing this biofuel. However, in 2018, in this biofuel policy, government expanded the scope of raw materials. Today, we can use damaged food grains also to produce biofuel. And whenever there is surplus production of rice wheat, after getting permission from the government, after getting permission from a National Biofuel Coordination Committee, we can use the excess fresh food grains like rice and wheat also to produce this biofuel. And this policy also emphasizes on increasing the number of biofuel refineries available in the market. So government has allocated 5000 crores for this purpose. To increase the availability of biofuel refineries. So we have raw materials, we have to convert that into biofuel for which we need refineries. So for setting up of refineries, particularly to produce second generation biofuel, government has allocated 5000 crores under this policy. 
So recently, this biofuel policy was amended. Was amended. This target of 2030 has been preponed. Has been preponed to 2025. So government wanted to achieve this blending target by 2025. Sir, what is the current status? How much we have blended? So as of 2022, we have blended 10%. We have blended 10% of ethanol. We have blended 10% of ethanol with petrol. That we have achieved. We have to achieve blending of another 10% of ethanol with petrol by 2025. It is going to be really challenging. See, this biofuel has a lot of advantages, friends. When we are able to blend 20% of ethanol with petrol, then our crude oil imports can be reduced. We can save a lot of our forex reserves. Since these biofuels are produced domestically, the prices will be cheaper. So, very soon the petrol prices can come down. Relatively cleaner pollution can come down. This can give additional income for farmers. So farmers, the plant waste, animal waste, non-edible portion of the plants, instead of burning it, they can sell it to the bio refineries for producing biofuel. So farmers can get additional income. If you go to the northern states, these non-edible part of the plants, the crop residues, we say it as stubble. After the harvest of rice and wheat, the crop residues, the uh, the a non-edible part of the crop that is burnt, it is simply burnt, which creates huge amount of pollution. So now, for producing second generation biofuel, that non-edible part will be useful. So farmers can sell that and make, can make additional income. Sugar industry, because of surplus sugar production back to back, the sugar industry is facing a lot of loss in the recent days. So that surplus sugar can be diverted for producing biofuel, the sugar industry also will get benefited. However, this also comes up with challenges. Achieving this blending by 2025 is going to be challenging, but still that is going to come up with a lot of benefits if it is achieved. So I hope the discussion was useful. I hope you got some clarity on the biofuel policy. So here I have given the uh, information regarding biofuel and the slides you can go through. You can pause the video. You can take small notes. I have given about national biofuel policy, right? So here about the benefits I have given in detail you can go through. So the recent amendment has advanced the target year that also I have given here. So based on our discussion, I have given the multiple choice question, find out the right answer and give it in the comment section. If you want to share some more advantages of this biofuel, you can give in the comments. If you want to highlight the challenges in achieving this target by 2025, you want to give the challenges, you can also give that in the comment section. I hope the uh, video was useful. So I'll meet you again with one more important uh, current affairs topic. Till then, bye, take care.